Good morning, Somerville. I'm Ethan Hanna. And I'm Kylie Cummings. We begin with Cooper and Jacqueline who share the details of the Murdaugh murder case. And with Bree and Raina explaining the failed deal between France and Australia. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. Welcome to news, welcome to skits, welcome to fun guarantee. Welcome to headlines, welcome to deadlines, welcome to wave TV. In a tan jumpsuit, handcuffed and shackled, Alec Murdoch faced a judge and criminal charges. Twitching and looking uncomfortable, the prominent South Carolina attorney, now a defendant in the low country court system, he knows all too well. One of the most interesting stories in the country right now is happening in our home state. Murdaugh is a profound lawyer who has a huge figure in the low country. Many mysteries have surrounded this family in the recent years. Alex Murdaugh's son, Paul, was in a boating accident in 2019 where he was intoxicated and crashed. A girl was flung from the boat and died. While his son was on trial for the death of the girl, Paul and Alex's wife, Maggie, were both murdered at their home when Alex found them in the yard. Okay, you said 4147 Moselle Road in Allison? Sir? You said 4147 Moselle Road in Allison? Yes, sir. 4147 Moselle Road. Stay on the line with me, okay? Yes, sir. Stay on the line with me, okay? 47 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. Mr. Murdoch, go ahead and talk to Collison. Now the latest news to come out was Alex was shot in the head but survived. Apparently, Alex hired someone to shoot him so his son could get insurance money. Alex has recently turned himself in, and the man behind the trigger is facing charges for insurance fraud and assisted suicide. That's all for now. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Jacqueline Holt. The Biden team had a technology sharing pact with the United Kingdom to expand their partnership in Australia with nuclear-powered submarines. The steel shut out another key Western ally, France, that signaled that Australia was breaking from a 2016 contract worth an estimated $65 billion, with a French shipbuilder and naval group to build 12 non-nuclear submarines. President Biden's team failed to inform France of Australia's withdrawal from their submarine deal well in advance of unveiling the pact with the U.S. and U.K. Reported from multiple sources, the Biden team officials left the affair to inform the French up to Australia through the situation. French officials were only notified hours prior to the public announcement of the new pact. The French officials are blaming the United States for the betrayal because the U.S. supplied Australia with the alternate submarine option, conveying that the U.S. bears all responsibility for the French contract's demise. In reality, the plan was poorly conceived with both France and Australia's governments failing to correctly calculate the cost and delays in the deal. If the deal went through, Australia and France might have suffered a larger consequence. Do you think Australia made the right decision? Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Maria Chavez. Next, Patrick updates on sports from last week. And Isaac and Heather tell us more about Homecoming Spirit Week. Ladies and gentlemen, and anyone else in between, welcome to Wave TV's 90 Second Sports Recap. I'll be your host as we get right onto the field of Somerville Sports. Butting heads and slamming in their rivalry game, Somerville won against Goose Creek, with their home team touching down a win, 20-13. And if that wasn't enough for you, get ready for their away game against Stratford today, hosted at the other SHS, Stratford High School. Come out and support our Green Wave varsity football. Flying through the gym at Cane Bay last weekend with Somerville's cheer team, stacking up against various teams. The cheer team fought hard to prepare a routine and will perform again on October 16th. Continuing to coast through the competition, Cross Country went to the Low Country Invitational at Mullet Hall, where Griffin McNeish placed fifth overall with a time of 16 minutes and 47 seconds, and her very own Isaac Cinnamon in 35th place with a time of 17 minutes and 33 seconds. 
As a whole, Somerville placed 13th above Fort Dorchester and Cane Bay. Next up hitting Doty Park Court was Tennis, who served up a victory 5-1 against Fort Dorchester. That win brings up to a record of two wins and one loss, and they'll be up against Bishop England on the 6th away at Daniel Island. Last but not least, girls volleyball rocked the firehouse at home in another region win against Fort Dorchester. Their next game is away against Stoll, starting at 6.30. It's sure to be action packed, so we hope to see you there. That's our Somerville recap. Sportcasting for Way TV, I'm Patrick Bailey. Next week is homecoming, which means it's also time for a spirit week. The homecoming theme this year is Once Upon a Wave, so there's going to be plenty of Disney decorations and costumes around the school. Here's what you can do each day to join in on the fun. First is Monsters University Monday, so show your spirit by representing your favorite college. Then Tuesday is Twin and Duo Day. Match up with one of your friends in the same outfit or as a classic pair of Disney characters. Then dive in with Under the Wave Wednesday, dressing up as the best water-related Disney characters. Thursday is Villains vs. Royals, where you can choose to be the king or queen of your kingdom or you can join the dark side and break out that maniacal laugh that you've always wanted to do finally on friday it's time to go gold with all the golden gear you can carry the parade and movie night will be on wednesday and the homecoming court will be announced at the game on friday hope you're excited for homecoming somerville reporting for wave tv i'm heather davis Now Kyle explains how cockroaches may be government spies. And last but certainly not least, Dylan and Kylie go ghost hunting. Ooh, scary. I'm back. This is my only friend, and cockroaches are a government conspiracy to spy on you. Have you ever seen where a cockroach comes from? No, you haven't. And if you have, you're lying to yourself. Now, you know those little things on their head, the little pointy little things that you learned about in school? Those are called antennas. But you want to know what else is an antenna? On a radio tower. Antennas, they transmit data. Cockroaches. Robots. Despicable be cookie robots like that. Yeah, but they're little crawly bug things. And what they do? They transmit the data that they spy on you to the CIA. You may be thinking, what do they know? They know when you wake up. They know when you go to bed. They know when you brush your teeth. They know if you wash your hair when you shower. You may be wondering, why would they want to know that? Tell him, Bones. He doesn't talk that much. But it's targeted ads. Have you ever been talking about something and it just kind of poofs up on your computer screen? It's because a cockroach is watching you. It's spying on you. It's telling the government what you like. Remember, Somerville, don't trust anything you read on the internet, except for from me. I'm the one exception. Help! We need FBI, Coast Guard, 911, Ghostbusters, somebody! What do you mean they're not available? Spirit Strikers? Go! 
Vote Wave TV for Homecoming. Vote me for Princess. Vote me for Queen. Vote me for Prince. And vote me for King.